Rabbi surah li sadri wa yassir li amri wa ahlul uqad datan min lisani ya faw qali bismillahirrahmanirrahim Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh Alhamdulillah Salatu wassalamu ala rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam We thank Allah and we praise Allah for <coughs> allowing us to meet again uh, tonight on Friday night The Friday busy night So some of the brothers probably going home straight and then probably get opportunity to Probably listen to our is a live right live on Facebook right yeah <clears throat> and then we ask Allah to send us blessing and salutation to our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam and his family his companion and all his followers until the end of time uh, today we gonna come to a next series after we complete what what was the the last uh, the last thing we talk about or oh, the the ten all right. So this is not probably is uh, much as important as knowing the ten, which is knowing the mothers, the our mothers. Allah actually mentions in Quran that they actually our mothers, the the mothers of believers, <coughs> ummahatul mu'minin. So if we want to call ourselves a mu'min, so let's time to learn about our mothers and extract some of the benefit and fadila and and blessing that we can probably implement in our life, inshallah. So today we start with, it's actually part one, however, uh, we have already covered our mother Khadija radiallahu anha and uh, Aisha, Aisha in the series of women of Jannah. So we decided to go to the third one, which is the third mother and which is a part one. So remember that. So this is part one, which is the third mother. So today we're going to talk inshallah, our third mother which is Saudah binti Zam'ah, one of the mothers of believers, Ummul Mu'minin, then Ummahatul Mu'minin is a, is, a, is a plural of that. <coughs> so it is actually quoted in Quran when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in Surah, surah Al-Hazab, Nabiyu Awla bil Mu'minin, that the Prophet has more, uh, what they call, concern, protections to the Mu'minin, even compared to the Mu'minin uh, the mu'min himself. So it's like Allah is a protector. And then wa azwa juhu and the wives of Rasulullah SAW, the ummahatuhum, they are like mothers uh, to you. So what is it? Uh, Ummah is like, uh, like I mentioned before, is a plural of ummu, which is the mother. And of course, when it says ma mother, is not uh, is not a biological mother. And when we say sometimes ummul, what is what, what do you call? Uh, do you know ummul Quran? Surah Fatiha. And then we sometimes call Umul Qura, which is the, the city, Makkah, right? And then Umul Kitab, the Lauh Mahfuz. So there's a, the word Umu is mother, but it's not necessarily a biological mother. So what is this mother? It's the mother of uh, Imam Al Qurtubi mentions that actually one, the ladies, or the women of Tarbia, which is education, so where we extract uh, education from them is uh, love and respect definitely so we have to show us res uh, respects and love and as well the protections as well uh why why they sometimes consider mother for example one of the blessings one of the uh, definitions of blessings of mahatu meaning that we treat them as like their mothers that means you will after the <coughs> passing away of rasulullah no one no other companions of a prophet can marry uh, the widow of the because they like mother so the, because of that the specially the specially picked uh, special specially selected Allah give them special status and today we probably learn some of the uh, some of the status that Allah uh, reveal in uh, much of the stories coming from surah to, surah al hazab which is the definitions and the blessings of the mother of the believers <coughs> so we start first uh, is the concept of ahlul bayt which is the household and again, what is Ahlul Bayt? Ahlul Bayt from Rasulullah SAW. Is it warm here or is it just me? <laughs> okay. <laughs> then I need. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so it's winter, right? Yeah. The household, the Ahlul Bayt. So the uh, the member of the the family. So um, most of this, uh, most of the Islamic scholars, the Muslim scholars believe that when Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam mentions about ahlul bayt that is actually the family of Rasulullah uh, Muhammad bin Abdullah 
then bin anyone Abdul Muttalib and then after Abdul Muttalib is uh, Hashim right so that means anyone which is the descendant of Banu Hashim and they are Muslims they consider the Ahlul Bayt and one of the one of the <coughs> rules of Ahlul Bayt they cannot receive Sadaqah so there was one narration where one of the cousins of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Fadl uh, bin Abbas, came to Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He was very poor and asked Ya Rasulullah, can I get some sadaqah? No, no. Don't you know that we at the Ahlul Bayt cannot receive sadaqah? Right? And uh, I, I don't know whether you remember one of the companions where, <coughs> where there were mentions about there's going to be a prophet. And how do you know this, this person is a prophet if they don't receive sadaqah? And this person, I think... Uh, um, from Farisi, uh, Salman al Farisi, I think, if, if I'm not mistaken, the, uh, tested that whether Rasulullah would take something, a sadaqah or zakah. So, this is not. So, that is uh, obviously um, the household of the Rasulullah is first of all, is Banu Hasim and Muslim as well. So, uh, even if Abu Jahal embraced Islam, not Abu Jahal, Abu Lahab, sorry, if Abu Lahab embraced Islam, then Abu Lahab will be part of the uh, uh, Ahlul Bayt but again if you because he died as a Kufur then he will not consider as Ahlul Bayt but his son uh, Utbah bin Utbah bin uh, Abdul, Abu Lahab is actually embraced Islam at the end so he become companions become Sahaba as well so there's a first component of when you, when you say the family the family is family by marriage and family by blood so the family by blood is Banu Hasim and then family by uh, by Mary is his wife, so that is, so that's why the the, the family of Rasulullah SAW when we says Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala alihi, that means that include the family that include all his uh, our our mothers and the wives of Rasulullah SAW. As I mentioned, they are not like any other uh, woman. Uh, they are not any for. For example, as I mentioned, they become haram for any of the Sahaba, the companion at the time to marry. Uh, the wife of Rasulullah Sallallahu after the demise of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam they deserve certain love and respect they become the, our role models and one of the blessing of being the mothers of the believer is uh, they will become the wife of Rasulullah in hereafter in this dunya as well as in hereafter uh, those are narrations where <coughs> Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi was almost very close to uh, put a uh, divorce to Hafsa uh, binti Umar bin, uh, bin Qat, uh, Umar bin Khattab and then Jibril came down and says you have to marry uh, her back because she will be your uh, will be your wife in, in Jannah as well so yes this is not like any other woman they have a special status Ya Nisa Nabiyu Las Tunna Kahadim Minan Nisa for example that yeah, that the, the wife of Rasulullah Sazam they have to uh, they, you're not like any other women, right? So there is a this is mentioned in Surah uh, uh, Surah, to, uh, surah Al Hazab. <coughs> uh, the stories of uh, of the uh, Rasulullah reminded. Okay, so that's I mentioned to you. Um, <coughs> who are the wives? So this probably a long. I don't know whether you can see it. I'll put it next. So um, why I put it? Can you see it? Can you read it? This all the thirteen, but not all the wives. I think Maria Al Kiptia uh, uh, was the was the milk Yamin, so it's not is actually not a not a mother. But the reason I put it here because I just want to see. Look at Khadija radiallahu anha was the mother that uh, when Rasulullah was married for uh, to her, there's only one is monogamous uh, mono was it a monogamous monogamous marriage for almost nearly twenty five years. Right, so it's 25, so one of the longest. And Rasulullah did not marry anyone else while he was married to Khadija Radiallahu So we cover Khadija Radiallahu Anha, so that's number one. <clears throat> and who is Sauda? Sauda is probably the oldest, yeah, is the oldest. And she, she was the second longest marriage, like uh, about 13 years. So she was married, it's so almost like a, the, the whole year of one or two years during Makkah time and the whole Medina time right? uh, she was married the longest one and then came Aisha, uh, Aisha and Hafsa was for about seven or nine years so <clears throat> and as his, uh, she died when she around 90 years old so there's the longest as well as the oldest one as well and uh, this uh, mother the Sauda uh, I don't know whether you can see this this color here 
I just wanna, I, I like, I like playing with this. Can you see this different color here? All right. There's two wives, which is uh, Zainab binti Huzaima and Raihana. Uh, they pass away during the time of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Then the other wives, they all pass away after Rasulullah. So they all outlive Rasulullah. So most of the uh, uh, the wives of Rasulullah outlive Rasulullah except three people, which is Khadija, Zainab, and Rahana. So yes, this is uh, our mother Sauda. And not probably not many people know, other than normally more <coughs> Muslims, the common Muslims they ask, they will probably know the Khadija and Aisha, right? So not so many, not so, so much about uh, Sauda. So. Let's learn about some um, uh, <clears throat> about her, Sauda bin Tizama. So obviously she is one of the early convert. Uh, she was a very very small tribe of Christ. And if, normally I like to bring to have a diagram or chart so far where the which part of the sub tribe of Christ. But I couldn't find uh, until until uh, Sauda bin Tizama bin Tizama, Kais Kais Kais, and I cannot find any other. Uh, no, uh, any other uh, descendants or the uh, uh, the, the great, great grandfathers until until um, <coughs> Quraysh. Uh, she was the one of the uh, one of the companions who migrated to uh, Ethiopia to Abyssinia, and uh, she actually went with uh, her husband Sakran, and then Sakran uh, Sakran bin Amr then passed away, and after they passed away, they returned to Makkah. And again, uh, and then uh, she was married to Rasulullah Sallallahu and she was married right about about after three months of the passing away of uh, Khadija Radhiallahu Anha. So there was after the passing away of if you if you if you remember the story when Rasulullah Sallallahu uh, Alaihi when Khadija passed away, it was really at the time of the year of sorrow for Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Because uh, his uncle Ali, uh, his uncle Abu Talib passed away, and then Khadija passed away. It was, it was really like we then and then uh, she also have uh, he also have uh, three unmarried daughters as well, so to look after. And that's why she was very, like very very sad. And a lot of people actually saw that Rasulullah was very sad. And someone came to to him and asked, "You should be married. Someone uh, you should be getting married." Right. <clears throat> so she, uh, then she was married for a. This is the year 10 of Da'wah and then until uh, and then she joined uh, the migration, the Hijrah to Medina as well. And what is the age? Not many people know actually. So some people say probably she was born between 570 and 580, probably about the same age of Rasulullah so some sort of, That's how was uh, the age of the time, uh, the year of uh, birth is probably not really that important or no one actually taking note of that. Uh, the marriage was uh, it was one of the one of the companions of Rasulullah Sallam by the name of Hawala. Uh, she was the one who approached Rasulullah Sallam and says, "You looks very sad. I think you should marry someone. Uh, you should be married if you want uh, a girl. You want uh, uh, a virgin. You should marry Aisha. And if you want someone very old, someone old, someone who's already mature, then uh, probably you should marry Sauda." And Rasulullah agreed to that. And then Kawala uh, came to uh, Sauda and asked that our Rasul wants to uh, do a khidbah on behalf of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and then they got married. And, <clears throat> and again, uh, these, uh, this marriage at the time was, uh, I, uh, I got a, the number, the, the number of the, the amount of dowry is about 12.5 ukiah, which is, if you convert it to today's Hong Kong dollar, it's about two thousand five hundred. It's quite enough. It's not a. It's not a big amount, but two thousand five hundred dollar, right? So if you convert your dowry last time, so is it about two thousand five hundred? <laughs> what is the common? I remember back in Indonesia, during my time when people get married around the eighties and stuff, or ninety, it's quite common that the Muslim family. You know what they use? They use the, um, they use the prayer mat, and the Quran as the dowry. So not necessarily the mana. I don't know because probably become a tradition. So almost everyone is doing that. So the dowry become the mahar. Uh, the mahar was a, a prayer mat and Quran. Prayer mat and Quran. And then sometimes with the prayer beads as well, right? So not so much on money. But I think people uh, change right now. They start using money and then with some sometimes like a funny number like nine thousand nine hundred ninety nine or something like that. Yeah, <coughs> the. The dowry at the time was about 2,500 Hong Kong dollar. 
and uh, it was that marriage was agreed by her father but then the and this is one of the lessons that we one of the brother of Zama was actually very very upset about that and he took a dust and a throw it at him like like what am I why is, why is wearing this this guy right so and later on he regretted when he became Muslim and again this is one of the one of the lessons that we can learn that sometimes you marry to someone but you don't always get along with all the family members and this is part of the and this is part of the things that the people are blessed if they married to someone and they they get along with the family members and everything this is one of the good blessing but it, more often than not you will hear cases where you don't get along with certain like mother-in-law or father-in-law and, and so on and so forth and also like experience that as well so the brother uh the brother of Zam uh, by the name of abit <coughs> uh, be, uh bin uh, bin Zam, uh, uh he was actually was not happy and 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 saw some disrespect to and throw his dust to his head yeah, even though later on he regretted. Uh, <clears throat> the emigrations to Hijra to Medina, uh, he stays for about two years before uh, before Hijra to Medina, and then he's part of the entourage of the Ras the family of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, which comprises of Sauda definitely, and then uh, he has the uh, uh, the foster son of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Zaid bin Haritha. And Zaid bin Haritha was at that time married to uh, Um Ayman, and they have the son by the same of by the name of Usama bin Zaid. So there's a whole family, and then the of course the unmarried daughters of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The married one is only one, which is Zainab, and then the unmarried one was a Fatima, and what's that? Oh, now it's only two then, because the other one, which is Rukaya, was with uh, Sofyan, with Umar. Uh, so, not with Sofyan, uh, Uthman. Sorry, well, I think I think it's only uh, it's only Fatima and uh, Um Kulthum. <coughs> Zanab is already married with Abu Al As, and Urkaya was with Uthman. And of course, uh, Sauda who is the the family entourage of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And again, not many stories about her in uh, Medina time. Uh, not so many. If you compare to if you compare to uh, Khadija and Aisha, there are not so many stories about her. Uh, one of the one of the stories about that is the ayah of hijab. Is actually when we talk about Umar bin Khattab, we talk about this story. This story went by. <clears throat> you no, know, during that time there's no toilet, right? Like we have a toilet here. So during that time, if they like a once a week or twice a week, people gather during night time, like seven o'clock after maghrib time or after before uh, after isha time. And they will leave this, uh, the town and they go like outside of the town where it's just dark and then they, they do the relief there, all right? Because they don't have toilet. So <clears throat> at the time of uh, <clears throat> our mother Sauda, I was planning to go to like a to toilet and she was wearing certain clothing. And Omar Radiallahu uh, who actually commented, hey, I can still recognize you. <laughs> and and Sada was was very upset, and he complained to Rasulullah, "What is it, right?" And because of that, the uh, Surah Al Azab, uh, uh, verse number fifty-three, "Wa uh, Iza Saal Tumuhunna Mata Anfas Alu Hunna Min Wa Min Waro What's it? Waro Hijab." And when you talk, when you ask his wife or uh, for something, ask them. Uh, Fas alu hunna min waro min waro i hijab from behind hijab, from behind a partition, and because of that, the, there's a special case for our mother that they have to have it. If you if you remember the stories of uh, I saw Dolana during the battle of the 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 camel, uh, she was wearing like like a tent, so you cannot see you cannot even see the uh, the body because you have uh, cover. With the time with the big partition, so the hijab is not the hijab that we have right now. Hijab, in our <coughs> uh, modern term, is is the uh, is the, the the covering of the, uh, the covering of the head, right? But this hijab is actually the partition. And this is one of the things that Umar bin Khattab mentions: Allah approved me on three occasions. One of them is this, because at that time Umar bin Khattab thought that women should be wearing hijab, right? 
and see he was the one who thinking about that if especially of course there are good people but they're also bad people as well so the because uh, they are our mother they should be protected they should be covered so and that's why if people come to uh, learn hadith from her from Aisha Radola and her Aisha will talk behind the hijab so there's a special hijab that we cannot see so this hijab is a special partition or the curtain that was revealed because of the story of Umar bin Khattab and and Sauda Radiola and her all right now just a quick lesson learned here uh, what is the lesson learned lesson here all men please do not comment on woman's dress <laughs> because apparently if you make a comment to woman's dress they will they will they, they will forever remember that right it was so sad even even Sada came and complained to Rasulullah so what is it he, he was complaining or he was commenting about my dress and so on right <clears throat> so that is about the eye of uh, hijab um, just one quick story is about her uh, Sayyid Bukhari, uh, Bukhari uh, the book of Zakah and I saw Radalana I was asking Rasulullah Ya Rasulullah who amongst us the wives will be passing away will pass away after you and the Rasulullah says the one with the longest hand and they didn't know what it meant so, right? so they measured their hands and they found that Sauda was the one with the longest uh, hand but apparently after that uh, <coughs> it was actually Zainab bin Dijas who actually passed away and then they just realized, oh, long hands mean the person who always uh, do a charity. So it was. Uh, so now we know that uh, our mother, <coughs> Sarda, uh, used to have uh, physically long hand, right? Now this is the one I wanna um, mention to you about. Uh, Sarda Rodello and her was about worried because of her age. Uh, she was a bit old compared to the rest, so she didn't want to compete. And then the probably she didn't have really desire to be with Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, but she has desire to be the wife of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So when he was when she will be resurrected, he will be she will be resurrected as the wife of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So even though so he, so that's why she was thinking. Um, um, I'm not gonna be competing with the other wives. So I'll just, but I want to stay married, right? And they continue married, and and I and then I, she gave her nights to Aisha Radiallahu right? So what does it mean? What is the lesson learned here? This is the one that I was making a note on. Then when uh, someone someone asked me about, apparently, an arrangement for marriage is ex acceptable in Islam. So they continue being married, Sauda, Rodiolo and her, and she will give her nights to Aisha, right? As long as no one is short change, as long as no one is harmed, everyone agrees, both parties agrees, they consider to be, and there's no unfair treatment, no unfair, uh, unfair treatment between the two parties, and everyone just uh, honky-dory with that, so... And that's what happened. So she, she gave her nuts to Aisha Radona. This is what I mean by. And this is probably uh, the last part about uh, about the ruling, uh, the fikih about the ruling of extramarital child. This is a very good story, actually. Um, there was a dispute with, uh, with the brother of Sauda, which is uh, Abd, Abd bin Zama and Saad bin Abu Waqqas. What happened was Saad bin Abu Waqqas as a brother and he how do I say that I need to I need to diagram he actually had a Zina relationship with the slave of uh, Zama right and the slave of Zama give birth so this boy right is actually the what do you call that the brother the half brother of Sauda right because they're from the same father and then there was a dispute right because Saad bin Abi Waqqas was the, okay this is the son of my brother I should have the custody for right and and Abid bin Zama said no 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 this guy is uh, uh, this boy is actually this uh, the uh, this the uh, the the mother 
is the slave of my father so is my half brother right so they have this and they came to rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam and they're asking ya rasulullah who should have this child custody who do you think should have the child custody right remember this boy right is supposed to be because from the same father then it should be the half brother of Zam, of, of sauda and abid bin zama right but is that actually is actually coming from uh, a zina relationship with the brother of Saad bin Abi Waqqas, right? And his name is Utbah bin Abi Waqqas. Who do you think should get the, the custody of this uh, of this child? Well, do you know? No, it's actually uh, Rasulullah SAW says, Al Waladu Lil Firash. That means the son belongs to the owner of the bed. Right? What does it mean? That means the custody of the boy belongs to the family of uh, Zam'ah. So then when, when Sauda asked Rasulullah, should I, in front of this boy, should I wear hijab or not? And Rasulullah answered that, in front of him, yeah, you can wear your hijab. But he still receives inheritance, inheritance from your father. Right? So that means from, from a fiqih point of view, from a law point of view, they're still considered, they're not from DNA though, right? It's still considered the son of uh, her father. I want to tell you this story. This story happens, I, I read it quite a while ago. It was, I think, happens in the United States. There's a family of a father, uh, a guy with the wife and uh, their six-year-old daughter, right? So one day, the, uh, the, uh, the, his wife, his wife got a cancer. And then a few years after that, or like a, less than a year, right? Less than two years. And the wife passed away, right? So then the father and then the, the daughter of seven years old or something like that. He, then after that, he received, uh, what's a letter from the court? Like a, uh, as a summon, mm. right? He received a letter from the court. Someone claimed his daughter is not his daughter. And they said he can do a DNA test to prove it. Right? So the guy came and finally with the police, with the court and everything, the court call, uh, with the letters and everything, and they, they managed to get the, the DNA test. And it's actually proven that daughter is actually not his. So what happened was his wife actually had an affair eight years ago, right? And then because of that, he claimed that the custody of this daughter is this man. And they went into court, right? And of course, become be so emotional for this person, right? Is I've been racing it for seven years and six years. I'm already attached. I'm already in love. We just lost our month, uh, our beloved wife and mother, and you know the court in the U.S. actually give the custody to this guy, right? To the uh, even though from a DNA perspective, he's not his biological father, right? And which is the same as the ruling of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, right? So Al Waladu Lil Firash. That means the the um, uh, the son or the bo the boy the uh, is the belongs to the belongs to the owner of the bed. Right? Uh, then the I think probably the last one. Uh, uh, she died at the age of ninety, uh, around six seven four, during the Khalifa of Muawiyah, uh, buried in Baki, and uh, she was known for someone who has uh, maturity and wisdom. And Aisha Radhanala was once commented that I wish I rather I rather be like her. Uh, she is when during Umar bin Khattab, when Umar bin Khattab gave all the stipend for all the the mothers and everyone, and she when every time she received one, she always donated. Right, so that is the the stories of uh, our mother. Wow, it's on half an hour only. <laughs> this is story of a. Uh, our mother Sauda, and I think that's all. This is what I can get. Uh, I didn't know it's gonna be, gonna be finished around half an hour. Um, any question? 
Oh, that that's the one. Uh, the 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 person was asking me about a certain condition, and that is exactly that you can have an agreement uh, as long as everyone agree, both parties agree, and of course, it's not not haram or anything that you can continue being married uh, for a certain reason. Well, there is going to be some social reason or something like that, as long as uh, both parties agree. All right, that's all. Any questions, brother? No? Okay, what else? Uh, I think that's all uh, that we I can share. So, can conclude now? If no question? All right. Jazakumullah khair. Subhanaka Allahumma wa bihamdik. Asadu ala ilaha ila anta wa astaghfiruka wa tubu ilaik.